Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to my midweek episode of my new series, Behind the Raw. And thank you very much for all the feedback on my inaugural episode from last week. If you haven't seen it actually, I'll link to that up here. But today I want to take you through my thought process in regards to an image that I took when I went up to the top of Geocon Mountain. Now when I say the top of Geocon Mountain, it's 300 meters and you can drive up there. Nonetheless, what you get from up there are spectacular views. However, on the day that I went up there, I didn't have much views, particularly as I was driving up, but I decided to make sure that I was gonna be persistent. So I waited around, got battered by wind, got battered by rain, but I got some light. And I want to take you through one particular shot that I took here. And during that day, I used my 70 to 200, I used my 150 to 600, and then I also put on my wide angle lens and I managed to get a couple of shots as well during that. But I want to take a shot, I want to take you through here a shot that I took at 70 mil. And it was just as the light would have broke. So I'll give you my edit, I'll give you my thoughts, what I like, what I don't like in relation to it. And I'll talk you through in regards to my workflow on this new series behind the raw so we're going to jump on the computer there now let's go <laughs> Okay, so jumping onto the computer here, you can see the image that I've chosen here of the view down onto Valencia Lighthouse, which was down here from the top of Geocon Mountain. Now on the settings, I took the shot at 1 100th of a second, F13, ISO 100, and at 70 mil. So the widest that I could get in relation to my 70 to 200 lens. But what I managed to fit within this frame was all the main elements that I wanted to be able to capture. And it was light that was hitting and flowing and cascading across the um, the fields that are below here in relation to the lighthouse. I had some nice waves that were crashing here and these islands as well. I think it's Begnish Island is off the uh, coast here and then with this S curve as well that I would have mentioned during the uh, video itself. So first thing when I look at this image anyway here and I'll take you through again my standard thought process is that I think I'm going to change it because I'm going to go for a 16.9 crop and the reason for that is because this cloud that's up here doesn't really add anything to the image for me. The main thing that I'm looking to achieve here is the light as I said as it's cascading over this landscape below me. So the first thing I'll do here is I'll go in and I will crop this image and I'll go into 16.9 and bringing that down here now I've got a better image and I think it's more pleasing because that was a waste of space let's just say on the high end. The reason for that, by the way, is because at the bottom down here, you've got fields that didn't really add anything to the image. I left a bit here, so we've got a small bit of layering and depth in relation to it, but I didn't need to have the camera pointed any further down because it wouldn't have added to the image. So first thing in relation to that is this. I don't necessarily need to worry about my horizon because there is no horizon to be seen. As you can see, the atmosphere in the cloud here was absolutely immense, um, but I know anyway that this image is is um, flat because I can look at the uh, lighthouse here and I can see that this is at a straight line in relation to the same. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and say, okay, do I need to adjust anything in regards to my exposure? Now, if I bring this all the way down here, you know, you can see that the brightest areas here are in relation to the um, the water. So I think if I don't need to bring it down, in fact, I probably want to bring it up and I'm going to bring it up just a slight tad, probably maybe around plus 0.55, just because I want to be able to get more detail out of the uh, the foreground. Contrast, I'm going to probably add in maybe, let's say plus six in relation to that. Um, now I do want to bring down my highlights. So again, if I bring the highlights down here, you'll start to see some uh, detail coming into the cloud here above. And that's bringing the highlights all the way down. But I think probably bringing the highlights down to around, maybe around about minus 60, uh, I think that should be uh, okay. Um, shadows then, I can bring those up because I've got a lot of detail here in relation to below. And I, because I expose the shot as well, right, if we're looking at the histogram here, they're not dark or anything like that. So I can bring the shadows up probably, I'd say maybe around 70, I think is what I'll go for here. I might adjust that as well as we go on. Uh, whites, again, very important. I've got the whites within the water and I want to not bring those down here. In fact, I want to bring them up because I want to be able to bring out the whites in total. So probably bring it up to maybe around about maybe 50. Uh, and then the overall blacks here, I'm gonna drop those just to add a bit more detail and contrast. And that's why I think the images started going to change. So I'll bring that down to minus 26, let's just say. 
Uh, texture, I don't need to go near it. Uh, clarity, I don't need to go near it. And this is where I mentioned in the last video, I like to use dehaze because if you look what happens with the sky here, it's now going to start to bring in some detail in regards to that. Now it might be counterproductive, you know, dehaze in a misty day. However, what it does do is it removes the haze, gives you more clarity in the foreground down here, and then you start to see the detail in those clouds. If I look at the original image, you don't really see much detail. Now already you're starting to see detail and you're starting to see this coming through here in regards to the texture uh, on the ground that's naturally there anyway. Now I do want to bring up a bit of punch in relation to this so I'm going to add probably maybe to say 20. Um, yeah that looks okay. Yeah, 23 in relation to the vibrance. And you can start to see now the real color is starting to come out uh, in relation to that image. And maybe I'll just give it a slight touch of saturation just to give it that extra bit of a bump. Now, from a white balance point of view, <clears throat> I don't need to change the white balance, but if I did want to follow the same thing as I've said before, clicking on a gray part of the sky here, you see it changes the image, it warms up that image here totally. Now the image was a bit colder because it actually was cold in relation to the light. So I think it was around about maybe here. So you get nice blues within the water. As I bring this up here, you get more of a yellow tone in the image, but you lose the blues in the water. So I think for me, I'm gonna leave that as it normally is. Maybe just give it a slight bit of movement uh, just to bring out those yellows and greens a bit more. And I think then in relation to that image, it's pretty much done. However, as I, as I said before, I want to check for uh, dust spots and I know that I had a lot of dust spots here well they were raindrops and mist so I missed a couple of them actually when I was doing the editing and I had to go back over them again and that's an important thing to do like I said in the last episode don't just edit your image and go okay that's it one and done you know go back to it you might find it as something that you need to fix and that you haven't spotted in the first round so again for that I'm going to bring my dehaze all the way up here and then you won't even see anything that's within that unless you look closely so if I now zoom in here and I give you a look over here on the top left hand corner you can start to see some artifacts that are going to start to show. So there's one as an example right now. So I'm just gonna go into this here. I'm gonna take my heel tool. I'm gonna to click on this. And that's now going to take a sample and not going to, going to remove that dust spot or raindrop. And then it's just a matter of scrolling over and seeing what else I have to look at uh, over on the other side of the image here. So one sec. And there is nothing else really that I can see. Oh, there's one final one up here. So I'm going to take that one out. And these are, wouldn't even be visible um, on ordinarily because you know, you're putting on dehaze, which is a great um, tool to be able to remove uh, any of the artifacts that are within that. So that's the sky anyway checked. And I'm gonna have a quick look here in relation to the water area. I don't see anything that's jumping out at me right now. I may miss it, but I don't think so. And I don't necessarily need to worry about the foreground anyway here because there's enough going on in relation to that, to the dust spot or the raindrop spot won't be spotted. So again, if I uh, take this, bring it back into normal, and then I take my dehaze back down. What did I have it at around about maybe 50? Yeah. I think anyway, yeah, that's fine. Now you start to get a much better image. And I, what I really like in relation to this is number one that I had light and my, pers my perseverance or persistence or stubbornness uh, came through. But I really like how the light is cascading all along here and all the way over here onto this other island. And then you get that texture as well within the cloud. Now I could add finally some contrast in relation to that. And if I bring my contrast, you see that it's darkening up down here and it's not doing anything to the sky. So I don't necessarily need to have that contrast within the image, just a little touch, I suppose, really. And then the final thing is check your lens correction if it's connected, if it's already been selected by uh, Lightroom and then go into detail and then we go into denoise. And this is very good because it's AI denoise. And if I give you a look here in regards to how it does to this image, like from afar, you may not even notice that there was any noise within the image. But if you start to look up here in relation to the uh, here is an example. You can see all the noise that's within the water. And then particularly when I start to go up higher into the sky, you can see all these artifacts in the noise as well. So I'm going to hit on that. That's going to uh, enhance that. Take around about maybe 30, 40 seconds, but I'll cut back in once it's done. Okay, so that's now done here. And if we were to zoom in, we can see that all of that noise is now 
gone. I may need to look and say, okay, do I need to sharpen up the image a bit slight, a bit more? Uh, kick my masking here if you hold down your uh, option key. And then what you'll see here as you slide the masking across is this is only going to affect the areas that are going to be highlighted here. So I don't necessarily want all of the other areas around here to be um, sharpened. It's only the textured areas like on the island and such like that. So again, a bit better here in regards to that. And then finally, what you can do, um, and I might give it a go just to see it here. So if you go onto the effects panel, you can then apply a vignette. Now the vignette is natural within this anyway because the light is what's drawing you into the image, but you can actually help that along by only having a small, tiny bit of movement in relation to how it darkens the edges and brings the eye straight then into where it's at. I don't necessarily think it's necessary, but I wanted to show you that here because what it really does is that it brings the eye into the the center of the frames and that's it that's my image done i'm really happy with this image actually and the one of the things that you could do in regards to this image as a final thing to play around i suppose really is you can go into your crop here okay uh, you can unlock your crop and then you can take this down here and you could then effectively go for a wider panel like so so we take away the end of the uh, the, the grass that's here and then you've got a panel of the entire scene from the one image. Now I don't have the megapixels that the likes of say Adam Gibbs would have on his 100 megapixel camera, but still at the same point you get an idea of what you can achieve here just from the one image. So yeah, I'm gonna take that back to my 16.9, which is my preferred image. So thank you very much as always for joining. I hope you enjoyed this quick episode behind the raw of this shoot. Be sure to tune in next week because it gets even in more interesting. As I was leaving, this light decided to play games with me and I decided to go off for another shoot. And I wanted to and I attempted to show the differences that you could do by using um, your filters to achieve different textures in water. But yeah, you'll have to see how that turns out. Tune in next week. Thank you very much as always for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlong the fall. Oh, 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 oh,